second decade of university sports coverage, TSN proudly presents CIAU Football. The band will play on here at Richardson Stadium in Kingston, site of many great playoff performances in the past. Hopefully we will get to see one again today. The Queens Golden Gales hosting the Bishops Gators, two longtime rivals in the Ontario Quebec Conference. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to CIU football on TSN as the playoffs begin. And yes, the Golden Gales are back after some dreadful seasons. And one guy you really have to give credit for the turnaround, their new head coach, Bob Howes, who served for so long as an assistant with the team, taking over for the legend, Doug Hargraves, who had 19 years leading the Gales, most of them very productive. But unfortunately for him, his final two were not so good. After winning the national championship in 1992, Queens did fall on hard times, winning only twice in 93 and then only once in 1994, missing the playoffs back-to-back. -back. But they're back now in 95, and it's not a ridiculous stretch to think they could be challenging for the national title once again. And once again, joining me, our analyst, Jamie Bone. Can a new coach make that big of a difference? Well, I think Bob Howes has made a great difference. He's instilled new enthusiasm into this football team. He set up the off-season training programs. He expected a lot from his assistant coaches. And that has transcended down to his team. This is a team now that is playing very, very well as a unit. Well, one guy that has certainly helped Bob Howes out is Bo Howes, his son, the uh, rookie quarterback, one of two offensive stars for the game. They have two great rookies in this Queens football team, and one you mentioned, Bo Howes, of course, the coach's son. And, you know, Queens is a 50% pass, 50% run team. Howes has put up close to 1,000 yards passing, six touchdowns and only three interceptions. So he's had a very good year so far. But the guy they really like is their backfield running back, and that is Paul Coriel, the youngster out of Michael Power in Toronto. Only got to start fifth game into this season, but he's racked up some pretty incredible numbers, averaging close to six yards per carry, and uh, he's the fastest player in this Queens football team and the only rookie in the OQIFC to make the All-Star team. Now, Queens has a good defense as well, and it'll have to be good against the Bishop Gators, one of the top offenses in the CIA. Certainly, in terms of throwing the football, they love to throw that ball. They have one of the great passing games in CIU, and that's because of their quarterback, Trevor Lovick. He's put up some dynamite numbers, over 2,300 yards passing this season, 15 touchdown passes, only 10 interceptions. Truly a remarkable year for this young quarterback. Now, when he gets back in those three five-step drops in the pocket, he looks to two receivers. One is David Butler. He's a possession receiver. Only 12.9 yards per reception. But he'll nickel and dime me to death, and then bang, they go to the big guy. That's Nigel McGilvery, averaging 20.7 yards per reception. The leading receiver in the OQ IFC, and also a game-breaker on punt returns, averaging over 20 yards on punt returns. Well, the Queens Golden Gales and Bishop Gators have not met in the playoffs since 1992, the last time Queens was in it. That year, the Gales went on to win the national title. But it's worthy to note that Bishops, uh, as long as Ian Breck has been either an assistant or head coach with the team as he is now, have never lost to the Gales here at Richardson Stadium. You know they'll be hoping to keep that string alive and move on to their second straight Ontario Quebec championship as the two teams prepare to meet today at Richardson Stadium. CIAU football on TSN is brought to you by GEO, a very smart car. And by Tim Hortons. You've always got time for Tim Hortons. It's Bishops and Queens, the OQIFC semifinal here in Kingston. We'll have the opening kickoff for you after this. This sports break is brought to you by Canadian Tire. There's a lot more to Canadian Tire for a lot less. Hi, everybody. I'm Darren Detition with this TSN Sports Update. It was a memorable night last night in the National Basketball Association as both the Grizzlies and the Toronto Raptors won their first ever regular season games. We held them to 79 points and 30% uh, shooting. AC Earl came up big in the first half, and Alvin Robinson was a man tonight. Great defense, 30 points, but it was a team effort defensively, and that's what won it for us. It's not often that, number one, you win uh, your first game as a head coach, and number two, you don't often win it on the road. So uh, I, I'm just thankful for the players who work so hard during training camp uh, to learn what we want to do and how we want to do it, and, uh, and they just played a terrific game. Both Toronto and Vancouver start off victorious. A number of other CIAU games being played will have updates during the course of the afternoon. Opening night at the Royal. 
top hats, tails, and the big show. The best horse and riders in the world hit the big top of the Royal Winter Fair. In competition for the honor, the tradition, and the hearts of Canadians. Cadillac show jumping at the Royal. Coverage begins November 10th, TSN. The Queen's Golden Gales and the Bishop's Gators from Richardson Stadium in Kingston looking to advance to the Ontario Quebec Championship and hopefully for one of these teams onto the Vanier Cup. That's what they're looking for. Well, it is a beautiful November afternoon here in Kingston, albeit a little bit on the chilly side and the windy side, three degrees Celsius. And look at that 35 kilometers per hour. It'll be blowing from our broadcast left to right, and it could be a bit of a factor in this team. A factor for the Bishop's Gators, who have elected to uh, take the ball and go with the win. Ian Breck likes that passing offense, has some trust in uh, his offensive coordinator to... Uh, you know, throw the football, Jamie. That's what they like to do this year. And, and his offense coordinator, Jacques Chapelain, of course, uh, done a remar remarkable job with this offense. As you say, Rod, they throw the ball. They do not believe in running the football hardly at all this year. This is a passing offense. Trevor Lovick setting a new record. Number of attempts, 305 this season. And two contrasting styles today. One, the throwing team, Bishops, Queens, a balanced football team. They would like to run the ball effectively today and use ball control. Bob House, an interim head coach, taking over for Doug Hargraves. Interim because they have not yet named the new head coach. Doug Hargraves still on staff for this final year, even though he had retired. I would have to think the kind of season he's put together, he would, they should hire him as the full-time head coach. Queens will kick off against the win. Dan Coder getting things underway here in Kingston. A short kick down to the Bishops, 36. And not much more, but still good field position for the Gators to get things going. Trevor Lovick put up these numbers against Queens in a losing effort September 30th. They lost that game 31 to 23. Nonetheless, had a remarkable year. He's a three-step drop pass. He likes to throw the ball very quickly. That was Troy Russell on the return as Bishops gets things started from their own territory. Don't be surprised if Lovick uh, passes, but he hands off and doesn't get much. But two yards over the middle. Offensive line for the Bishop's Gators, relatively new, the veteran David Eilers, but they've done an excellent job protecting uh, Trevor Lovick for the pass. Backs and receivers, of course, David Butler, the big receiver with the 43 receptions this year. Nigel McGilvery, the game breaker. He has the most yardage in the OQIFC this season. Gain of only one, second and nine for Lovick and the Gators. Obvious oh. passing situation for the team that likes to throw the ball. Lovick rolling right, looks for Nigel McGilvery and has him, but he bobbles it. It is no good, and the Gators will be punting early. Okay, Queen's a little bit lucky here because they lost contain, and Trevor Lovick gets outside clean. McGilvery now goes down and gets into that hook, but you can see the field here, and that's going to be a problem today. It was very wet last week. The drainage, they've had problems with drainage here. It's very mushy. Well, Chris Edwards, excuse me, Jamie, Chris Edwards will uh, like having the win. This has been a tough year punting for him, averaging just under 28 yards a kick. Special teams, of course, in the playoffs, always so important. Punting could be a big factor today. Queens has the edge. Edwards has to take advantage while he has that win. And he does not in this one. A short kick, and it will roll down to the Queens 40, about the 39-yard line. And taken there... Returned up over the 45-yard line by number 21, Paul Greenhouse. Bo House, even though he is a rookie in his second year of uh, eligibility, elected to concentrate on the academics last year, Jamie. And really quite incredible because the high school that he went to, Loyalist, Loyola, Loyalist Collegiate, dropped football in his senior year, so he did not play his last year of high school football. First and ten, Bo Howes and the Queens Golden Gales from their own 47-yard line. Takes the handoff and rolls left and finds a man down at center field. That is Paul Othan for the Gales. Be a short second down. 
Offensive line for the Gales. Big Ken Kirkwood, the leader there. This is an excellent O-line as well, particularly in run blocking. And the receiving core led by Rob Weir. He's a leading receiver with 30 receptions. And of course, the dynamite freshman, Paul Coriel, at tailback and the fullback, John Taylor. And that is second down and 10 yards to go for the Queens Golden Gales. This time they try run up the middle and they do it successfully. Close to first down yardage. That is Paul Coriel. I was talking to Paul Coriel before the game. He said, watch the draw out of the eye. And that's exactly what they run here. They draw it. It's a straight man blocking. He keeps his balance. He's his shoulders going up the field. And now he goes north-south. This is a guy has got great big thighs. A really fast, powerful running back. With all the ground game Queens has, the Gales don't mind going against the wind as much. And look, especially in this first quarter against the wind, to be more running. They run again. It's Coriel again, right side. Picks up three yards on the play. It'll be second and seven. Defensive line for the Gators, Eric Jodouin, a good one, the veteran in there. And uh, their linebackers are really the excellent part. Francis Bellefoy, who is an all-star this year, probably is going to be an all-Canadian. The big uh, key for the Gators defense, especially today. It is second down, about eight yards to go. A shotgun formation. A rarity for the Gales as Howes rolls to his left and the left he throws. And finds a man. It is Rob Weir out of bounds. Close to, but I think short of the first down for Queen. Brennan making the tackle on Weir. Likes to go to the receiver, Rob Weir. He's a fifth-year player, played quarterback the last two seasons. They get outside clean. Unfortunately for Rob Weir, he did not make the first down, so they're forced to punt. Bishop secondary, very experienced. Matt Legg in his fifth year. Troy Russell, the all-Canadian at corner. This is a good dynamite group that has picked off 11 balls this season. It was short of the first down. And a punting situation into the win for the Gales. Dan Coderre back. One of the best punters the Gales have had in a number of years. Averaging 35 yards a kick, his longest 53. From midfield, and this one is short as well. Possible no yards if Queens doesn't keep an eye on it, and they do get the flag. Bishops downing it at around the 22-yard line. Well, I'm actually surprised, Rod, that they kicked it to Nigel McGilvery the kind of year that he's having in punt returns. 21.5-yard average. 26-yard kick, and no return, and the flag is waved off. So no, no yards penalty after all. Trevor Lovick to go to work again. A first and ten. Lovick hurting on his left side. He's got shoulder trouble and a, a bad knee as well, but it does not show. As he looks and finds a man out. First down yardage. That is number 85, Stefan Roy, the defensive line for Queens. Jim Aru, James Osborne, Kevin Buskey to stuff up the middle, and Carl Rasmussen with all the zone coverage. They do rely on a lot of pressure from those guys. Dave Bannatine, the rookie for Queens, and very solid in the middle for the Golden Gales. And, of course, Tim Ware, their all-star linebacker. First and ten once again for Bishops. Loving on the move, passing again. Looks for McGilbert, and he's got him at the 45. Nigel McGilvery takes it out close to another first down up to around the 48 yard line of Bishops. Trevor Lovick just coming back out in that semi roll. Now Queens are playing strictly a zone coverage right now. A very soft zone as you can see Nigel McGilvery just goes down turns around and hooks in front of the defensive back number eight Jeff Dutrezak. Talking about the secondary Max Turner the veteran the fourth year veteran but Paul Greenhow in that hot corner he's a leading interception leader with six INTs. Loving this time, hands off. And the ground game goes nowhere. Shane Thompson loses a yard for Bishops. Set up a second down and 11. And let's talk about the philosophy the Queens is going to run on defense here. We talked they are a zone team only. They're not going to get themselves into a situation where they run man to man. A good job by defensive tackle, making sure that he steps hard into that A gap and does not allow the guard to get across. Kevin Buskey making the tackle. 
Queens relying on its front four to do more of a job because they do drop back in the zone coverages. This time, Lovick rolls to his left, looks and fires, and great coverage and nearly picked off for the Golden Gales. I believe that was number 29, John Krasinowski. Almost had the pick. This is a real good play. This is exactly how you want to play zone coverage. Krasinowski, he waits to see McGilvery in the hole. And he comes in and knocks the ball away. Almost comes up with a big interception. Excuse me, Stefan Roa is in the tender receiver. Punting situation for Bishops again. As Chris Edwards stands on his own 32. Had a bad punt the last time out. Kicking with the wind once again. And this one is a little bit better and gets a nice roll down to the 30-yard line. And Paul Greenhow is going nowhere. Here in the first quarter, it is a scoreless game, Queens and Bishops. Darren Detition has this update. Hey, thanks very much, Rod. OUAA semifinal, Toronto Varsity Blues at Laurier. But the Hawks look good. It's Peter Wang. He'll go 29 yards for the touchdown, six to nothing. They didn't make the convert. It's still six zip. Laurier ranked number one in the nation. Thank you, Darren. We'll have updates throughout the day on the other playoff games going on. Queens handoff left side. That's Coriel. Got some room and up for a gain of about five yards. Ron, right, it's interesting to see Bishops on defense right now. Look how many people are inside of the tackles. They bring both linebackers, your stack. That's where they want to try and run off tackle here and outside. They feel that this is where Bishops will be weak today. They're trying to really take away that inside trap, that off tackle play that Queens like to run with the youngster Paul Coriel. As the saying goes, the best defense can sometimes be a good offense with a ball control team to keep the Gators off the field. I'm sure that's what Queens wants to do is the uh, pass attempt fails. So we hear someone in the crowd asking that question. What on earth went on for the Golden Gales that time? Matt they're Carlisle running, Sorry, they're running a quick scheme here. Three-step drop. He's got the wide receiver doing an out. He's got the tight end, Matt Carlisle, just going straight down the seam. That's a pass where I think Bo Howes just threw it too hard. It's not that far away from take something off it, give your receiver a chance to catch the football. So another punt early in the ball game. First quarter, Dan Coderre, his second punt of the game from his own 25. Neither offense really to get much moving so far here in Kingston. Bit better punt as well with the roll against the wind at the 40-yard line for Nigel McGilvery. Takes it up and over the Bishop's 51-yard line. It is 0-0, but midway through the first quarter, we'll have more in the CIU after this. Want healthy looking shiny Pantene hair? Begin at the root. This is Panthenol, also called Provitamin B5. It's in Pantene Pro V Provitamin Shampoo and Conditioner. Always was, always will be. Pantene's Provitamins penetrate deeply into your hair, deep into the root, where healthier looking hair begins, while conditioners improve your hair all the way to the tips. For hair so healthy looking it shines, get Pantene Pro V. Get back to your roots. Last night in the Canada West, the regular season still going on. The Calgary Dinos, the second-ranked team in the country, beat Manitoba 37-34. So Calgary will host the Canada West Championship and the Saskatchewan Huskies next Friday night. Should be an excellent game. Those two always seem to be in it. Calgary Dinosaurs are on fire right now. Jason Aston, their quarterback's playing so well. And, of course, Don Blair, maybe the best receiver in the CIU. Trevor the Lovick. Player. Excuse me, Jamie. Trevor Lovick has had the hot hand. One of the finest quarterbacks in the CIU this year. Trying to get something going for the Gators. In a scoreless tie with Queens. Rolling to his right again. And finding Luke Normand out at midfield. And he'll pick up about four or five yards for the Gators. You know, if Queens want to run this kind of zone coverage, Bishops are putting four receivers to that side. And they only have really three people in zone coverage over there. So they're really flooding that zone. Gives Trevor Lovick all sorts of choices. Plus, there's no pressure on Trevor Lovick. He's getting out clean. They've got to try to contain him, not allow him that free release outside. He has all sorts. He decides to dump it off to Luke Norman. And Max Turner coming up to make the tackle. Second down, but six yards to go for the Gators. Lovick will pass again. Looks this time to his left and dumps it off. And he has got Normand again. Up close to a uh, first down. That'll still be short, and they'll be kicking again. 
Trevor Lovett, they kept the people inside tight, two slots. You can see now they get a little bit more pressure on him. He has to dump the ball off earlier than he would like to. Luke Norman not going down deep enough to get the first down. But if you're Bob Mullins, defensive coordinator for the Queens Golden Gales, you have to say, hey, it's working exactly as I thought it would work. You know, we're forcing them to have to drive the football. We're not going to give them up anything big. Bishops have yet to put a sustained drive together. Chris Edwards, third punt. The last one was 36 yards. Perfect snap. And this one is a little bit better as well, taking a roll and a bounce down at the 25. That's Paul Greenhow again. It's out of bounds at around the uh, Queens 26 yard line. So the Gales are hemmed in a little bit further. No score at Richardson Stadium. The Gators and the Gales. Let's go! Michelin's new radial XSE technology, a whole new standard of performance. In the rain, in the snow, it even saves gas. The new Michelin Energy tires with radial XSE technology. It's science that goes beyond magic. Number 66, Ken Kirkwood, finest offensive lineman on this team, an, OU, an OQIFC All-Star this year. And you know, Rod, a year ago, he was lying in a hospital bed. He had been diagnosed with testicular cancer, and had successful surgery and also uh, therapy afterwards, and he's back in this lineup, and he said, boy, it's really changed his perspective in terms of life, and he said he's just enjoying playing football once again. Remarkable recovery, anchoring an excellent uh, Gales offensive line, and the ball is dropped there, so we'll have a second and 10 situation for Queens at their 27. Trying to run the hits pass to Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor was the starting halfback at the beginning of the season, then hurt himself midway through and that's when Paul Coriel came in but they're still trying to get him action into this game more as a slot receiver you see Bo Howes he was born the day before the Grey Cup in 1975 his dad Bob the center with the Edmonton Eskimos in their dynasty years supposed to be born in Edmonton but he came two weeks early and uh, Bo's mother was in Calgary to see Bob play and here's Bo playing and looking deep good coverage and incomplete in Bishop's territory the Gales will be punted Sammy Brennan on the coverage, the fourth-year player out of A.Y. Jackson in Canada. Turns around, plays that actually pretty well. Turns his head around and locates the ball, and that way he's not going to get called for interference and does not touch the receiver, Andrew Rush. Nice tall corner, 6'3", 193. Tough to throw over those guys. Dan Coderre to punt again. The wind has died down substantially from the start of the game. And it shows with the kick, kind of a knuckler that squibs down to about the Bishops 45, but gets the job done and pushes uh, Bishops back. The uh, Gators with time winding down in the uh, first quarter, trying to get things going with the wind again. Let's head back to Darren Detition for another update. Hey, thanks very much, Rod. Another OU AA semifinal. Waterloo Warriors at Western. Western, third ranked in the nation, but it's Brian Wilkerson to Mike Mallett. He'll take it in for the touchdown, seven to nothing. Waterloo out early in this football game. Allow me to ask the Western alumnus, James Bowen, <laughs> what he thinks about that. <laughs> I think Waterloo are a great football team. A short gain for the Gators. Well, you had voiced some concerns that if the weather was bad at JW Little Stadium, Waterloo with that great defense uh, can certainly do something if they can get a lead, and they've got that lead. I think Waterloo are the most underestimated team in the nation. Is they look Trevor Lovett going back a little bit to the run game. Big fullback, of Shane course, Thompson. Shane Thompson. Also plays point guard for the basketball Gators. So it sets up a second and nine. And for this team, another obvious passing situation. That's what Lovick will do. And it is intercepted at midfield by John Krizanowski. He nearly had one earlier in the game. And he has it this time. That is his fourth interception of the year. Now, the reason they just picked off, Max Turner, the halfback, comes on a halfback blitz. You see, he just comes into his screen. Lovick sees it, decides they got to get rid of the ball, instantly throws it before he wants to. And Krizanowski comes down with the interception. 
Bob Mullins told us yesterday, I will not blitz very much when I do, I'll pick my spots. And that time he picked the right spot, but he did not come with a linebacker, came with a defensive back. Hand off over the right side. Gain of five for the Gales. Is John Thielen, son of Dave Thielen, who had some great years with the Ottawa Rough Riders. Also played with the Argos, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in the latter part of his career. Matt Leg and on the tackle. Leg another OQIFD All Star for the Bishop Skaters, and they have several. Second down, five to go. Queens up the middle again. This time, Paul Coriel and gets close to first down yardage. The Gales keep it on the ground. And if there is an Achilles tendon with his Bishop Skaters, they do not have a very big defensive line. They only average about 240 pounds. And when you look at Queen's offensive line, they're in the 280, 290 category. They're just content to pound the ball in there. I see the backup running back, uh, Steve Gibbons, in the game, John Thielen. You see his numbers in his third year from Nepean, Ontario, went to one of the finer high schools in the Ottawa program. As you see Thielen, the injured man, getting off St. Pius X. Went to high school in the PN, and we always, our school always had a tough uh, time with St. Pius. Played against his brother, Dave Thielen Jr. So uh, running backs uh, run in the family for the Thielens. Was Jim Daly the coach at uh, Pius X at that time? The former coach at University of Ottawa, now with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders? Jim Daly's been involved, and in, I think he was at the time, been involved in just about every level of uh, coaching in uh, Ottawa. With the Ravens, Carlton Ravens, Ottawa Sooners, Ottawa UGGs. Dan Coderre to punt again. Just inside Queen's territory. And the third down and short. And a short punt. It will travel out of bounds. Just outside the Queen's, the Bishop's 20-yard line. Still no score as the first quarter winds down. Bishop's and Queen's will have more after this. This game will face the winner of the other OQ semifinal, Concordia at Ottawa. The Stingers had beaten the GGs twice in a row, looking to make it three straight. And at the half in the Atlantic, this is a regular season game. St. Mary's needing a win to have any playoff shot, leading Mount Allison by just one point. St. Mary's needs a victory and a loss by St. Francis Xavier to the Acadia Axman. A look at the defensive coordinator for the Queen's Golden Gales. Bob Mullen there for a long time. This is 14th season and uh, learned from a uh, great defensive coordinator, John Thompson, and learned well. That was the shutout that uh, Bobby Mullen led in the Vanier Cup in 92, the only shutout in Vanier history. Queens beat St. Mary's. Here's a first down for the Bishops Gators and a fumble. And it looks like Bishops has got it back. That's the early indication right now as it bounced around on the turf. It was Michelle Morin who dropped the ball. And yes, Bishops did get it back. Trying to run the trap draw. Now Morin pounces it outside. And right there, the hit by Max Turner once again puts his shoulder pads right on the ball and it pops out. Now the mad scramble. And Bishops lucky to get this football back. Watch Max Turner, 17, put his shoulder pad right there on the ball and pops it out. Bishops has already turned it over once, nearly a second time. Lovick looks to pass again. Looking for Dave Butler, and he's got him out at the 35-yard line, and a first down for Bishops. Well, that's how they like to use David Butler. Take him down the field. He's a tall receiver, 6'3", 198 pounds, and then they turn him outside, and Lovick puts a ball right on the line, and does a nice job to keep his feet in bounds. At a Winston Churchill Secondary School in St. Catharines. His fifth and final season. First and 10. Gators trying to get something going. Towards the end of this first quarter, they hand off left side, and it is short yardage. It'll be second and long. 
Shane Thompson with the carry. Now 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Well, the Bishop Gators, Jamie, a heartbreaker last year. They won the Ontario Quebec Conference, wound up losing to the Western Mustangs. I remember we covered that game at the half. Bishops led Western 24 to 9, wound up losing it 12, 41 to 24. Two different games last year, the first half and the second half. Loving passed the daylights out of the Mustangs in that first half, but then they shut him down. Bishop's looking to get back. And Trevor Lovick looking just to get away from the pressure of the Queen's front. He does not and loses yardage. And once again, at the end of the quarter, the Bishop's drive stalls. The Gators will be punted. As we head to break, the second quarter coming up. Still a no score. Queens and Bishops, the OQIFC playoffs will continue. I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer, protects better against odor. Now you got proof. Guaranteed. Want to try new Pert Plus? No way. I tried it years ago. My hair needs a separate conditioner. This new stuff cleans and conditions better than back then. But it's still a shampoo and conditioner in one. True, but while some other two-in-ones only vary the level of the same conditioners, new Pert Plus actually has different conditioning formulas, customized for each hair type. We'll see. Well, it is actually better. It's really manageable. New Pert Plus, customized conditioning that's right for you. I'll never forget that bright yellow slicker. Puddles wide as oceans, and that hot bowl of soup that had warmed you to your toes. Thank goodness Tim Hortons remembers too. Hi, Tom. Time for lunch. With freshly baked bread for sandwiches. This will hit the spot. And real stick to your ribs soups. Oh, it'll still warm those. Who says you can't go home again? Through 15 minutes of play, it is as close as it can be here at Richardson Stadium. No score. Bishops and Queens. The Gators about to punt, this time against the win. Chris Edwards didn't have too much success with the win. This time he is against it, and it is picking up a little bit now. His average coming in, 27.9 yards. And this isn't bad. This might be his best punt of the day. Paul Greenhow chasing it back and out of bounds at the Queens 36. Go figure. That's a great punt against the wind. The wind is starting to pick up again here in the beginning of the second quarter. Bo Howes now has the wind at his back. Go now, come on. Psychologically, always important when you want to go and throw. You can see the wind picking up as the flags start to flutter a little bit more. I would have to say, Rod, right now, this is a, a moral victory of sorts for the Queens Golden Gale to get out of that first quarter without any points being scored against them when Bishops had the win. Well, there you see the Gators. Uh, You'd expect them to have more passing yardage. You'd expect Queens to have more on the ground just like that. Pretty close to net yards, though, on that one turnover. And even equal in time of possession, all showing up on the scoreboard. It is scoreless. And it is Bo Howes looking to pass, and he is in trouble. And just throws it away as Rob Weir takes an extra shot after the ball was down. And a flag on the play. The all-Canadian Troy Russell, Jamie. I'll tell you what, if Bo Howes had a scene, Paul Othan, he ran right down the middle of the field and Aaron White didn't see him. That would have been six points. But Rob Weir, he's trying to dump the ball off now and Rob Weir comes up and Troy Russell, who's the all-Canadian corner, and you know, I really like his style of play. That's unnecessary and that hurts his football team, but he is an aggressive, hard-hitting, tough football player. We saw him last year in the Churchill Bowl. He was a very, very intense player. And they moved the ball after Queens had huddled up. So they got a nice 20, 25 yard jaunt to get up to the line of scrimmage now. The 46 yard line, first and 10 for the Golden Gales. And they go back to the pass again with the win. Bo Howes and is stripped of the football by number 49, Chris Horner. And the Gators say they have it. A difficulty created when the left handed quarterback rolls left. 
Well, nice me, job rolls by, to his right. Sorry, nice job by Bishop. They do not allow Bo Howes to get his shoulders turned up the field. And you can see that clearly is a fumble. He was not down, and now the scramble. Nice job by Chris Horner. Linebacker, 6'1", 190 at a Lauren Park Secondary School. Bo Howes gets his own fumble back. It was a fumble, but Queen still does have it. Bo Howes again looking to pass, and it is picked off. Bishops at the Queen's 45. Matt Legg takes it, and this will be the best field position for the Gators of the game. Now, Queens are trying to run three receivers down on the left-hand side, and Legg has got the short, flat responsibility, but when no one crosses his face, he continues to go down the field. You see, he normally would expand out to the right, but no one crosses his face. He just keeps dropping back, dropping back. And Bo Howes, looking at his receiver the whole way, Matt Legg, he's a fifth-year player. He just watches the quarterback's eyes and comes up with a big interception. Here comes Trevor Loving and the Bishop Skaters. Inside Queen's territory as he rolls to his right. Looks deep downfield, double coverage on, and it is still close. Luke Normand has it go off his fingertips at around the seven-yard line of Queen's. And Dan Cordaire, number 16, the defensive back, just got his hands in there enough. You see Trevor Lovick having the big smile on his face saying, boy, we were close. Nice route by Luke Normand. Actually, I think Cordaire missed it altogether, and Normand just could not come up with the catch. Trevor Lovick, when I had him, is that a confidence thing? Like I think you could so. have had that's, it once, you think you can get it again? That's great, I think so, yeah, I like that style. Lovig is dangerous, and Queen certainly acknowledges that, often dropping back with six defensive backs. And Lovig looks to pass again, a little bit of pressure. Rolls it off to the left, has Norman, not much yardage, however. And he's actually taken down as the whistles blow at about the line of scrimmage. They'll make it a gain of two yards and a third down situation for Bishops. They'll be punting again. Normand taking a few hits from Queens. He'll have a couple of yellow marks in his helmet after today's game. Chris Edwards had a good punt last time into the win. Another one like that. He'll have a chance to put the Gales much deeper in their territory. Paul Greenhow back for this one. High snap. Edwards gets it away. It is much shorter this time, however. Rolling out of bounds at the Queen's 20-yard line. And you can see Chris Edwards just losing his footing when he goes to kick. He's a left-footed kicker and falls on his back. Second quarter here in Kingston. Still no score between Queen's and Bishops. Want to try new Pert Plus? No way. I tried it years ago. My hair needs a separate conditioner. This new stuff cleans and conditions better than back then. But it's still a shampoo and conditioner in one. True, but while some other two-in-ones only vary the level of the same conditioners, new Pert Plus actually has different conditioning formulas, customized for each hair type. We'll see. Well, it is actually better. It's really manageable. New Pert Plus, customized conditioning that's right for you. The punters have been busy here at Richardson Stadium, especially Bishop's Chris Edwards. Jamie, you had a tough one on that last one. The footing seemed to be a little hard for him. Well, we talked about how bad the field is. Now, Chris Edwards is a left-footed kicker. Watch his right foot. Just slides out. Boom. That's why he didn't get off the very good kick. It's really soft in the very middle. They said they had some tile problems that they think that the drainage tiles have broken, and there's clay underneath, and the water will just not drain through this field, and therefore it collects. And they said they've had a lot of rain here this fall. An out-of-town score, the Ottawa U GGs leading Concordia now 14 to nothing. Ottawa U had a great start, really fell apart in the second half, but looking to move on to the OQ final. And so are these two teams, still scoreless in the second quarter. That's Coriel going to his left side, a gain of about two or three yards. Had a chance to talk to Paul Coriel before today's game, and I said, you've been averaging 25 carries per game. He goes, yeah, I wish it was 30. I just want him to continue to give me the ball all the time. I get stronger as the game goes on. He's going to have a great career in CIU. Get your hands up, well, strange as it seems with the wind blowing from left to right on your screen, you would think most of the play would be the other end of the field, but not the case. 
In this quarter, Bishop's having Queens hemmed in. It was just the opposite last quarter. As Howes throws again and has a man. And it's Rob Weir for a first down at the 40-yard line, Queens. A nice job by Rob Weir, the veteran fifth-year receiver, number 12. Who's down against Troy Russell. They're just playing his own coverage and a nice pass over Carl Villeneuve, number two. Rob Weir keeps his concentration. He comes down with a nice catch. They say it's a shame in a way he had to try his hand at quarterback the last couple of years because he missed the experience as a receiver, and that's really his more natural position. How's to throw again? Not as much running for the Gales. This one falls in front of the, the re intended receiver, Weir, again, incomplete for a second and ten. And you can see the advantage having a big offensive line what it can do for your quarterback's confidence. Bo Howes is in the pocket, literally untouched right now. No one's getting any pressure on him whatsoever. So being able to sit back there, take a look around, and not have anybody bugging him while he throws the football. Only two of nine. Which makes me wonder why Queens is throwing the football so much when the ground game seemed to be working. And that is more of their bread and butter. This time they do hand off in second and long. Pick up some yardage, but not enough. The Gales will be punting again. You would have told me before this game, Rod, that with nine minutes left to go in the second quarter, that there would be no score. I wouldn't have believed you. I thought these two teams could put the points on the board. Well, they met back in the fourth week of the season uh, in Lennoxville, Quebec, and Queens won that one. A score of 32 to 21, but that was Bishop's turnaround. That was their wake-up call. You know, the Gators haven't lost since then. They went to one and three, and then won four straight heading into this playoff game. Bishop's has really turned it around. Dan Coderre to punt again from his own 30-yard line. Better kick with the wind. Chasing McGilvery back to his own 25, and he is caught. Not getting much more. The 26-yard line. Bishops is finally hemmed in a little deeper. Once again, another update from Darren Detition. Hey, thanks very much, Rod. It's the Laurier Golden Hawks. They hit it again at home. Kevin McDonald, he'll take the snap, drop back the pass, the pump fake, then he'll go deep to Andrew Scharzman. He'll make the grab, he'll dance into the end zone, and it is now 15 to nothing for the number one ranked team in the nation. If all things stay the same and you get Laurier and Waterloo, toughy night against his old team. He's trying to bother the guy from Western here beside me. It's early yet. Hand off to pitch out rather to Shane Thompson. Picks up about five yards on the play. Shane Thompson, one of the products out of the Sage Eps in Montreal, attended John Abbott. They talked about his basketball exploits with the Bishop's Gators as well. Point guard averaging five yards per carry this season. You see Lovick's numbers passing much better than Howe's. 60% completion rate. Be a lot more where that came from, especially with a score like this. And Lovick this time has his man, Stefan Wa, slip and fall, and it falls incomplete. And the Gators will be punting again. And let's put those numbers into perspective here for Trevor Lovick. Been throwing the ball out here. That was just not a very good throw, and Trevor Lovick knows it. Trevor Lovick only has 46 yards passing so far in this game. He was averaging 307 yards per game. So well off of his average. Two bucks and a kick once again. We've seen a lot of this today. A punting display between the Gales and the Gators. Neither offense able to sustain much of a drive. Edwards to punt from his own 20-yard line. And uh, Greenhow takes it up around midfield. Meets a wall of white and purple and is driven back out of bounds. But you can see right now, Rod, Queen is starting to win that game of field position. Oh, my goodness. They came. Thank goodness. We'll have more after this. I'll never forget that bright yellow slicker. Puddles wide as oceans. And that hot bowl of soup that had warmed you to your toes. Thank goodness Tim Hortons remembers, too. Hi, Tom. Time for lunch. With freshly baked bread for sandwiches. This will hit the spot. And real stick-to-your-ribs soups. Oh, it'll still warm those. Got time for Tim Who says you can't go home again? 
second quarter action and still no score at Richardson Stadium in Kingston the Ontario Quebec conference semifinal you see Ian Breck back again took over this job as head coach from Bruce Calder in uh, 1988 won the OQ championship in 88 90 and again last year in 94 first and ten Queens at midfield the handoff left and Coriel plows his way over for two yards and no more. This is the kind of situation Queens really does not want to get itself into where they're going to be facing second down and long. Good job by Bellefoy, the linebacker. Boy, he just engulfed him. Francis, Francis Bellefoy. Bellefoy. Not very tall. We saw him yesterday, only 5'9", but boy, he's just a fire plug, that guy. Strong. Following a line of great Bishops defensive players. Leroy Blue. Ray Bernard. Joel Kruzic last year in All-Canadian that they lost. And Paul Connery as well. Another All-Canadian. The Metris Trophy winner last year was not that. This pass is incomplete at the Bishop's 40-yard line on a second and eight situation intended for number one Andrew Rush. And this is not good news for Queens. Bo Howes is down. And that is his throwing arm that he's holding his elbow. Play action pass, gets back in the pocket, looks right. Now he tries to come back left, and it's Jim Georgitsis, linebacker. Comes in and drills him. And Howes is still down on the ground. And if it is indeed Howes' uh, left arm, it looks like his helmet was just buried in around the area of the elbow. That's the only thing I can imagine that would be hurting him. The backup quarterback for Queens is Dustin Falshear, who has thrown 45 passes this year, completed 15 of them. For 228 yards and two touchdowns, two interceptions. Got a bit of experience, but this would be a big blow to the Gales. I was mentioning uh, when Bo Howes uh, was born, the day before that Grey Cup in 75. The whole relationship, I wonder, between Howes and, uh, and Bob Howes this year. Is it father-son? Is it coach and player? They say it hasn't really been a problem at all, not for the rest of the team either. No, I talked to Bob about that too. He said, no, he's... He's my son, right, but he said, I'm his coach as well. He said, I do kind of feel kind of nice for him when he makes a great big play for us. He said, I think it's really nice that I'm there to see him make it. And a similar situation in Western earlier this year. Jordan Haler playing for Dad Larry. A short punt for the Gales, taken by Matt Leggett as 35. A good break for Bishops up to the 40. And the Gators will enjoy some good field position. Once again, here's an update with Darren Detitian. Hey, Rod, I don't know if your partner's going to like this one. The Waterloo Warriors threatening once again. Brian Wilkerson, he'll drop back and go to Adrian Thorne. Thorne makes the grab, rolls into the end zone, 29-yard touchdown. They missed the convert. It's now 14-3 for the Warriors. What do you have to say, partner? What did I tell you yesterday? Yeah, you did. You said weather conditions especially. Waterloo is an excellent team. Great defense. Scary with the lead. You saw Bo Howes looked like more of an injury to the midsection. His counterpart Trevor Lovett gets things going. He is intercepted for the second time today. It is Paul Greenhow for the Queens Golden Gales. They'll take over on their own 51-yard line. And you know, that's just a bad decision by Trevor Lovett. He's a fourth-year player. He's got to take what Queens is giving him. And right now, they're giving him the back out in the flat. They get Michelle Moran out there all alone. Lovett looks at him, but now he gets greedy. He tries to go down the field and try and get it all. You're playing right into Queens' strength if you try to do those kind of things. Because they're just sitting back there playing deep zone, wanting to come up on every thrown ball. Looking there for number 83, Nigel McGilvery, but not to be found. And because of it, Queens takes over in very good field position. With the win in the second quarter, the ball is dropped. And nearly a break for the Gators there. They almost get it back. And Dustin Falshear will be coming in for the injured Bo Howes. You see the numbers. And it's funny, you know, whenever you see a new quarterback come in, they're always warming up, throwing on the sidelines. What they should also do is get the center over there with them as well and take a couple of snaps because this is the kind of thing that happens. Hugh Irwin, number 46, almost jumping on that ball for Bishops. But it is second and 12 yards for the Golden Gales and a shotgun formation. Falsher will be throwing this ball, looks like it anyway, on his first attempt. Another lefty, two lefty quarterbacks for the Gales. His first pass is complete to Matt Carlisle. Penetrating into Bishop's territory at the 45-yard line. Good confidence booster for a, a backup to come in and complete one right away. Sure is. And you know what Bishop's are trying to do is play man coverage and come with some people. They brought the 
Inside halfback, Carl Villeneuve on a blitz. And Matt Carlisle goes down, just turns around and sits there, and Dustin Falshier finds him. Good play. It's a first and 10 for the Gales at the Bishop's 45-yard line. They hand off again, Coriel left side. Two, maybe three yards on the play. Bo Howes warming up again, seems to have shaken it off, whatever seemed to be bothering. But, you know, what's interesting now is that you get another quarterback in the game, Dustin Falsh here, he's completed a pass, he starts to get some confidence, you think, geez, do we start to leave him in there? Do we make a change right now? It's a tough decision. Now that's especially tough when, when one, <laughs> yeah, one quarterback, <laughs> his dad is the head coach. I want to know, does he go over and say coach, or does he go and say dad? Didn't depends, ask him that. Depends yeah. on how bad he guess he wants to get in. The true question is, how could one of the finest setters in Canadian football have a quarterback for his time? Don't you wonder about that, Jamie? Well, we talked about that. Uh, I talked about that about Bob earlier. Hand off right side. And nothing doing for the Golden Gales. In the second down and seven-yard situation, Coriel had nowhere to run. Get back to that Bob Howe story. He said, you know, it's just like being a, it's just like being a minor. You know, you're in the mines all day. You want your, don't want your kid to be doing that. Same with playing offensive line. And you can see what it's like down there in the trenches. Especially when you got to take on a guy like Francis Belafoy. Yeah, Belafoy, he gets so low and gets his legs underneath him. Very strong legs, explodes. And he said, I wanted something better for my son. I didn't want him to be banging his head <laughs> on the offensive line. <laughs> Nothing bad about life in the trenches. Oh, yeah. We should learn about that someday. <laughs> Another punting situation for Queens just inside their territory, but midfield for Coderre. Another bad punt down, takes a roll at the 25 and the 20 for Bishops. And we will take another break with still no score to report here in Kingston. Queen Zero, Bishop Zero. I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer, protects better against odor. Now you got proof. Guaranteed. A lot of people didn't think the Concordia Stingers could beat the Ottawa UGGs three straight times, and so far, Jamie, doesn't look like they will. I think that's the toughest thing in sport is to beat a good team three times in a row, and Concordia's finding that out this afternoon. The winner of that one, of course, plays the winner here. Could be Trevor Lovig and the Bishop's Gators starting out at the 25-yard line. And they will run the football. Shane Thompson, right side, once again, short gain. Defense has been strong for both teams so far in this one. They've really played well, and I think uh, for Queens especially, they have stayed with that zone. They've been very, very patient. They'll give Bishops the underneath routes as Bobby Mullen sends in the signals to his defense. Came to Queens as a quarterback. I did not want to play there, and I know you can enlighten us a little bit more because you were here at that time, right? Yeah, well, I came in 79, and Bob Mullen had, actually was a very good defensive back, but Jim Rutka, uh, in med school at the time, he was a quarterback for the national championship then, uh, didn't come back, and they needed a uh, QB. They had a rookie, Bobby Wright, who went on to play for five years there, but Bob Mullen played at the time. He was the reluctant QB, and uh, he ended up getting his wish and returning to defensive back, but a very intense guy as a player, very intense and excellent defensive coordinator for the Gales for a number of years. First and ten, Bishop, sorry, second down and four, and it'll be third and a lot longer than that. Trevor Lovick is brought down by number 42, Carl Rasmussen. Pardon me, number 48, Tim Ware on the play, but uh, the first time they have gotten to Lovick on the day. Well, all the backs get out of the backfield, and Tim Ware actually stumbles a little bit, but then he catches his feet and comes around, and Lovick's surprised to see him, thinking that there wasn't any blitz coming at all. Tim Ware, all-conference linebacker in his fifth and final year at a Lawrence Park. An OQIFC All-Star, one of seven for the Gales in 1995. Chris Everts is punting from uh, the deepest territory he has been in, and he has not had a good day, and he gets a high snap, and it is partially blocked, and bounces down at the Bishop's 45, picked up there by Greenhow, and nearly fumbles it away. Flags go down, looks like no yards, Queens will have its best chance of the day to finally put some points on the board. There's a good decision by Queens to come after him. He's 
been having some difficulties kicking the ball. You can see it's not a clean block. The ball's a little bit high. Left-footed kicker. Bang, just off of the left arm of Matt Cerrone. Now Paul Greenhow comes down and almost makes a fatal mistake of fumbling the ball. Number 61, Matt Cerrone. Straight up the middle. Matt Cerrone now a backup defensive lineman. They kind of rotate him through, but he was a starter in that 92 season before he blew his knee out against Welf in the Churchill Bowl. It took him a long time to recover from that. Queens was penalized on the play, but nonetheless take over an excellent field position at the Bishops 34. Falsher looks left and finds a man, Andrew Rush, down at the Bishops 25, close to a first down. And you think about how utilized, or how they've utilized Rob Weir. He's had 30 receptions. The other receiver, Andrew Rush, coming into this game only had three. That's his fourth reception of the year. Falsher putting it out, nice catch. Gets his shoulders up the field. This is the kind of situation Queens likes to see itself in. Second down and short because they can do so many things. They can run inside trap, they can run bootleg on you. Gives them all sorts of options. Falshear still in there on a second and two. Fakes the handoff. Little play action. Looks to take off himself, and he will not have the first down. So Queens will still have the chance to put some points on the board, but it'll be a field goal attempt. Run play action pass, try and get them to respect third and short. You see John Milne didn't have any of it, didn't buy it at all. He forced Falshear out of the pocket to step up, and then all the rest of the Gators come in. Come on, Robbie! You know, it's funny, I'm sure he got into a situation, Rob, where you know, he is the backup quarterback and also a first-year player, and he's probably thinking, don't make any mistakes down here. Don't cough the ball up, because we are in field goal range. Let's make sure I play it smart. Rob Weir is 10 for 14 on the year. This one will come from 36 yards. He has not got a great leg, not great for distance. Pretty good for accuracy. This one looks to be accurate and looks to be long enough. It is good. And the Queens Golden Gales draw first blood getting on the scoreboard to lead Bishops 3-0 in the second quarter. This game is gone, Jamie. Three points are very big points. In a defensive struggle. First and ten bishops, 35-yard line. Lovig's got to get something going. One of the finest passing offenses in the country, but not on this day. Queens has done an excellent job of shutting him down. Sends three guys right and has to scramble around and dump it off, looking for Michelle Morin, incomplete. And I'll tell you what's causing Trevor Lovick all sorts of problems. Not only are they playing very good zone defense, and you have to play very well as a unit, but you just take a look at the defensive ends of Queen. Jim Aru and Carl Rasmussen. Aru is 6'3", 198. That's not very big, kind of thin. Rasmussen, 6'2", 212. They are not big people, but they're quick. They're against offensive tackles that are substantially bigger, and they just cannot hold those guys out getting around the corner. They're getting around the corner. Lovick's forced to kind of pull it up and then try and find a secondary receiver. And so far, he hasn't been able to find it. One thing Bob Mullen said about his defense, not the uh, most, not the best athletes necessarily, but play well in a system. And they are today. And this is not helping Bishop's cause as well. The drop ball by Stefan Roy would have been first down territory. Instead, the Gators will once again be punted. And it comes down to fundamentals. You have to catch the ball in your hands, not against your body. And look what happens here. Tries to catch it inside. Takes his eyes off a little bit. Good pass by Trevor Lovick. But those are the kinds you have to come down with. Both defenses, the story so far in this game. Queen statistically was the one of the top, certainly the top in uh, the OQ, one of the top in the country with uh, 97 points allowed. However, there was one game that was uh, disqualified, a result against Concordia. If you count those points, it's still up there, though, allowing 112 points, 14 points a game. Have allowed none so far. Another low punt for Edwards gets a nice roll and out of bounds down at the 43 yard line of the Gates. Bob Howe's longtime CFL career, a great center with the Edmonton Eskimos, and we're talking about that interim label. I think next year they'll have that scratched out now they have to say head coach. And his son, Bo, is back in the ball game. 
injured two drives ago with a hit to the midsection. Queens drove for a field goal its last time out. Taking advantage of a partially blocked punt. This time they start in their own territory. And once again they throw the ball. And it is John Taylor for a long completion into Bishop's territory at the 47-yard line. Taylor was the one who had the starting halfback job, but then when he went down, Paul Coriel had his chance to shine and move in. And now they're using his receiver all sorts of time. Now he gets his feet set, finds a receiver, goes up nice and high and catches the ball at its highest point. He waits for that ball to come down. He's not going to catch that. That is going to be there. First and ten for Bo Howes. Finds another man over the middle. Lots of room and down to the Bishop's 22-yard line is Matt Carlisle, number 78. You ever wanted to question Bo Howe's arm strength? You saw it right there. He just drills this one right into Matt Carl. Now he makes a nice move right here. Bam. So safety falls down Aaron White. It's up the field. Matt Carl out of Maitland, Ontario. Also played at Concordia University before he came over here to Queens. Got 11 catches on the air for... 221 yards. But a big average, this 20 yard average, so you can see how they use him. They use him in that kind of a situation where they run the ball, run the ball, throw to the outsides, outsides, and then bang, they hit him down that middle seam as the safety start cheating to the outside. 38 seconds to go until halftime, and it is as defensive as you can get in a football game. Three nothing, Queens leading it, driving for more, and within field goal range of Rob Weir. Bo Howes in the shotgun formation. Looks like more passing for the team that had a good reputation running the football. Howes looks to the end zone, and it is a touchdown. Queens Golden Gales number one, Andrew Rush. This is just a great play. They get in the shotgun. They semi-roll right. Now this is going to be throwback all the way. They have him running a post against Sammy Brennan. And you talk about threading the needle. Look at that. Aaron White, 21 for Bishops, comes across and just misses the ball. But great concentration by Andrew Rush. And an out Adam Scott start. Secondary School in Peterborough. A 22-yard touchdown pass, and the convert is good. And Queens will head to the locker room with a lead, leading 10 0 now. Nice job by Bo Howes. Semi sprint left, get all the flow going to the left, now throwing back. And you know, this is why 21, Aaron White was just out of that play because he follows Bo Howes across, creates that seam. Nice catch. Should be happy. Lots to celebrate. That was a great catch. He looks pretty fired up now. He looks like he's the captain of that kickoff team as well. And you see guys like that, they run down and make the tackle. <laughs> he's pumped. He is. Actually, I believe he's the safety, so he will not be running down and make the tackle. And if he does, they could be in a lot of trouble if they break it. Now, there's the Queens kickoff. Short down to about the 25-yard line for the Gators. Taken by Nigel McGilvery. He's got some room outside. McGilvery's got some speed as well. Up over the Bishops, 50 to the 51 yard line. And with time winding down, perhaps Bishops is a pass or two away from a field goal try. It's a nice job by McGilvery, but Tyler Kudar, number 30, who has contained for Queens, gets caught inside. And now McGilvery gets around the corner. You can see the field kind of slippery, can't kind of make the cut he wants to make. He's not big, but he is fast, and he has been the most effective receiver for the Gators this year. Loving, obviously, in a passing situation, and the pressure is on, and he is down again with flags on the field. Now, I think Bishops are going to have to do some adjustment at halftime to take care of Jim Aru and Carl Rasmussen, either keep backs in. And James Osborne, number 59, is called for the face mask. A good break for the Gators. Take a look at the ends. They're just getting so much pressure. Working up the field, and Lovick just cannot get out of that pressure. 
The defensive ends force him up inside, and you've got James Osborne and Kevin Buskey, the two defensive tackles. At the Queens 44, Loving needs one more completion to set up a field goal and won't get it. Throws it away, nobody near it. In purple and white, three Queens defensive backs are closer. And that probably should have been grounding, but a smart move by Trevor Lovick to get rid of it when nothing's there. Second down. The referee, Terry Tremblay, from Orleans, Ontario. 12 seconds to go on the clock in this first half. The Gators looking to salvage something. Down 10 nothing. Loving to pass again. Looking and picked off once again with flags on the play. He wanted Dave Butler. And that was intercepted. And once again, Queens content to play in that deep zone. Giving the underneath. Trevor Lovick throws it up. It's covered. You see the face mask there, David Butler. On Andy Miners, who got the interception. Robin, a face mask, number three, Bishops. First down. When Bob, Bob Mullen said, excuse me, that the uh, Gales would be going to a 4 2 6, that 6 DB is Miners in there. Well, he's really come up with a very good scheme. I think what Bishops will have to do at halftime with. Ian Breck and Trevor Lovick, they're going to have to say, listen, Queens are giving us some things underneath. We have to be patient. We have to continue to take what they give us. We cannot force any footballs in there. We've tried to force them in this afternoon, and we've thrown three interceptions. And then we'll just down it and let the time run out in this first half. And apparently they cannot do that because the clock is finally started to tick down. And this will definitely be the last play of the half. Queens quite content. As it should be with a 10 nothing lead the way defense has dominated so far in this football game. Down goes Bo Howes and into the dressing rooms go the Bishop Skaters and the Queens Golden Gales. The Gales leading the Gators 10 nothing after 30 minutes of play. Will have more CIU and TSN after this. I know it sounds crazy, but yeah, I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. Because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer. High endurance protects against odor better. So if you still think every deodorant works the same, take the challenge. Try high endurance from Old Spice. Because now you got proof. Guaranteed. From the sport venues of the world. Y'all ready for this? These are power plays. Sports anthems that rock the world. Hits that inspired champions. There's just no limit to power plays. The world's hottest sports anthems from quality music. It's in stores now. For a healthy decision. Press, crunch. You can't beat that. McCain Super Fries is where it's at. Great tasting, crispy McCain Super Fries are prepared with 100% non hydrogenated canola oil. So they contain just half a gram of saturated fat per serving. More than that, they taste just great. So get the facts there on the pack. McCain Super Fries, low in saturated fats for a healthy decision. Now you can't beat that. Everyone, I'm Darren Detition here at TSN Control. Busy day in the world of sports. We've been updating football games for you during the course of this afternoon. It's time now to take an in-depth look at the Toronto Varsity Blues facing Laurier. Laurier ranked number one in the nation. The last time these two teams met, Laurier won it 41 to 16. They come out hard in this one. The Laurier D. 
They come up with the fumble, they recover it. That turnover leads to this score. Peter Wang gets good blocking. He'll take it 29 yards into the end zone. Laurier took a six to nothing lead. The Golden Hawks continue to hammer the Blues. Derek Jean gets crunched by Harvey Stables later in the first half. Kevin McDonald, he'll air one out to Andrew Sharsman. 52 yards for the major. Laurier was up by 15 to one at that point in time, but moments ago, the varsity blows come back. Francis at nine. He'll pick up the ball and he's gone. 95 yards on the punt return. That would cut into the Golden Hawks lead. Toronto trying to make a game of it. Laurier ranked number one in the nation. Now 15 to eight in the second quarter of play. Waterloo and Western doing battle this afternoon. The Mustangs ranked third in the nation and it's a great day. Western on their first drive. Warren Goldie though picked up. Trevor Tom. Waterloo takes over in their own 38. The Warriors drive up the field. Second and goal. Ryan Wilkinson, he rolls out. He'll go to Mike Mallett at the one. He'll punch it in for the touchdown. Seven to nothing. Waterloo on top. Second quarter. Waterloo up 8-3. Driving again. Wilkinson puts it up. He'll find Adrian Thorne. He's in for the major. They miss the extra point. They lead it by a count of 14-3 now at the half. Another CIU score to pass along to you. Ottawa all over Concordia by a count of 21 to nothing. In the CFL, the Baltimore Stallions at home to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. It's now 12 to 1. Tracy Ham with a lone touchdown in that game. We'll take a short break and be back in a moment. Yeah, I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer, protects better against odor. Now you got proof. Guaranteed. Face it, shaving is a pain. It strips away the skin's moisture, leaving it hot, dry, and burning. But now they're sensitive from Old Spice. It's the one with cooling sensates, an invigorating blast of real refreshment that takes the heat out of shaving. I'll never forget that bright yellow slicker. Puddles wide as oceans and that hot bowl of soup that had warmed you to your toes. Thank goodness Tim Hortons remembers too. Hi, Tom. Time for lunch. With freshly baked bread for sandwiches. This will hit the spot. And real stick-to-your-rib soups. Oh, it'll still warm those. Got time for Tim Who says you can't go home again? Some traditional halftime festivities for the Queen's University Golden Gales and a little bit of a reason to celebrate, although with only 10 points in the whole game at halftime, still lots of football to be played against a very explosive Bishop's offense. Well, we mentioned before this game began that Queen's had won a Vanier Cup in 1992. It's when Queen's is playing well that I suppose you see more of the tradition and hear more of the celebration. I know when you went to Western in those days, it was the same thing. That's right, Rob. But, you know, one of the things, I went to Western and I was a quarterback. You know, quarterbacks are treated quite a bit differently than offensive linemen. And I know you were an offensive lineman here at Queen's. Tell me about some of your experiences. Now, first of all, I saw two quarterbacks, Bob Wright, and I saw another quarterback walking around here named Bob Mullins, and both of those guys were limping. Now, is that any indication of how you played offensive line when you were here at Queens? Yeah, I don't really know much about that at all. Is uh, Oh, my goodness, yeah. Well, well now you see why I shaved the mustache off. Well, I actually look like a wide receiver there. There you are wearing number 64, and Rod, I think those face masks, uh, I think they've been retired to the Smithsonian Institution. Right now, there you are in a good stance. Playing tackle there, but not offensive center. Yeah, played some uh, center as well. And, now let and me I'd like to throw a lot over the punter's heads. Too, I was going to ask you that. How yeah. many did you dribble back and how many did you throw them over? <laughs> oh, that's scary. I'm going to have nightmares tonight, I think, when I go home and I see that picture flash into my dreams. Well, let me just say, <laughs> actually, that I did have the uh, pleasure, although I wasn't a very good offensive lineman, played uh, for the Gales in 79 and in 81. Uh, both times they went to the national uh, semifinal against the Western Mustangs the year after you played there in 79. So we missed uh, meeting each other in the field by about a year. And then in 81, lost to the Atlantic ball. This version, this offensive line, I would say, is much better off. And uh, it and the rest of the Queens Golden Gales lead the Bishop's Gators at the half at Richardson Stadium. 10 nothing. We'll be back.
I'm sneezing. My head's stuffed. I'm coughing. I ache all over. I gotta get some sleep. I'm teaching a big class tomorrow. I've got something to take care of you. But I gotta sleep. That's why I've got NyQuil. NyQuil relieves stuffy heads like cold capsules, coughs like a cough medicine, and aches and pains like a pain reliever. Now you'll get the sleep you need. NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can sleep medicine. just yet with that potent offense, but Bishops is down, trailing the Queen's Golden Gales here in Kingston, 10-0 at the half. Well, on this one, we expected some great offense by Trevor Lubbock. So far, that has not materialized. Special teams can be as much the story in anything in a close game, and it certainly was uh, to set up Queen's first point of the game. Special teams are the big difference in this game so far, Rod, and it was Queen's who actually capitalized first on it. It was the block punt. Chris Edwards gets back a high snap, but Matt Zeroni comes in from his defensive tackle position and just gets a piece of it, but enough to put Queens in very good field position. Paul Greenhow comes over and makes sure that the ball is still going to be Queens. Kind of a little tricky there, but he gets it out of bounds, and that sets up Queens' as first points. They kick a field goal. Rob Weir puts it through for three. 36-yard field goal. Then the next drive, Bo Howes back from injury and back to generate a touchdown. Real nice job by Bo Howes because they roll out left and out of that shotgun that influences the safety, Aaron White, and then he puts the ball right on a line to Andrew Rush makes a sensational catch to put Queens up 10 to nothing. The real strength against strength in this game is Bishop's offense against Queens defense and clearly you can tell from the score that the uh, Trevor Lovig is not winning this battle so far. He's struggling. Well he's struggling because he's not taking what Queens wants to give him. He's trying to force that ball deep. He went here earlier in the game and got picked off and now he goes back in. They had the sixth defensive back in their minors and he comes up with the interception snuffing out any chance of Bishop getting on the board in the first half. Well, certainly I would think that uh, if one team is going to come back from behind, it would be Bishops because they throw the ball so well. What do you expect in this second half? What kind of adjustments can the Gators make? Well, I think what they're going to have to do is sit down and talk to Trevor Loving and say, Trevor, this is not the kind of play that you've gotten us this far this year and the kind of numbers you put up. You've got some dynamite people out there in the receiving court. Give them a chance to do something with it. Get the ball to those people underneath. Queens are not going to allow you to throw the ball deep on them. Take what they give you. Hit the backs a few times. Then maybe you force Queens to come up a little bit. Then maybe you can hit the big one but you gotta set it up first one thing that has surprised me about this is how much that uh, Queens has thrown the football really we know them as a, as a for their ground game for being solid on the ground and they have been throwing the ball a that's lot. right they have thrown actually pretty effectively and you know, take a look at the numbers at halftime it really bears it out that they are a running team you know first downs all in Queens favor right now but passing yardage which is a big surprise 116 for Queens only 46 for Bishops. Now you got to think Bishops averaging 307 yards per game, well off their average, and rushing, of course, no surprise there. Everybody thought that Queens would, in fact, be lead this game in rushing, and, and and Bishops would be second. If Queens is to go on to win this game, I would assume ball control offense would be key for the second half. If they can run it more, get some first downs, keep Bishops off the field, that could sum it up right there. Yeah, and I don't think you're going to see Bobby Mullins change a thing on defense. Yeah, Bishops Gators know what it's like to be in a position uh, to protect a lead. They have to come back this time very capable of doing it some celebration in Kingston maybe a bit early Queens leading it 10 nothing at the half I'll never forget that bright yellow slicker Puddles wide as oceans, and that hot bowl of soup that had warmed you to your toes. Thank goodness Tim Hortons remembers too. Hi, Tom. Time for lunch. With freshly baked bread for sandwiches. This will hit the spot. And real stick to your ribs soups. Oh, it'll still warm those. Got time for Tim Who says you can't go home again? Want to try new Pert Plus? No way. I tried it years ago. My hair needs a separate conditioner. This new stuff cleans and conditions better than back then. But it's still a shampoo and conditioner in one. True, but while some other two-in-ones only vary the level of the same conditioners, new Pert Plus actually has different conditioning formulas, customized for each hair type. We'll see. Well, it is actually better. 
It's really manageable. New Pert Plus. Customized conditioning that's right for you. All right, gentlemen. Tomorrow, your butts are mine. Lights out. Man, I'm hungry. Russell Athletic Wear is made to handle the toughest situations on and off the field. Hot dogs. Crisp fries. Hamburgers. Tacos. Tacos grande. Pizza. Coach? Going somewhere, ladies. Hard work. Dedication. Commitment. Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Get up there, large butt. Go, go. Time at Richardson Stadium in Kingston, where the Queen's Golden Gales lead the Bishop's Gators 10-0. And it's a pleasure now to welcome the head coach of the Queen's Golden Gales, Bob House. Thanks for joining us at halftime. First of all, Bob, well, just your impression on the way things have gone so far for you. Well, it's been a little bit uh, scary out there. People are a little bit nervous and that kind of stuff. I was happy to see a score there finally at the end and uh, we lost our uh, starting fullback John Teal and so that kind of scrambled us a little bit in there but uh, we're just going to carry on now. Bob coming into this year uh, after Doug Hargraves retired were you a little bit disappointed that you still have that word in front of head coach that says interim head coach and they didn't <laughs> make you in fact the head coach? No I'm not uh, I'm not worried about that and in uh, fact I wasn't quite sure whether I wanted to be anyway so I think that this year is good in that I can have a uh, shot at it and just see how it feels. Just uh, what do you expect in the second half from that uh, Bishop's offense? You know they're high powered. Well, they're, they're just going to keep on doing the uh, same things. They're just going to try to throw the ball, and, and uh, we're just going to have to stop them. And on the other side of the ball, uh, we're going to have to throw probably a, a little bit more now. Bob, thank you very much. Good luck in the second half. You're welcome. Thanks, Rod. Bob Howes, as the second half is about to begin. Bob Sunbo throwing a touchdown pass for Queens. The only touchdown of this game, the Gales leading it. 10 nothing as Dan Coderre gets set to get things started once again in the second half in Kingston. A deeper kick this time to Nigel McGilvery. It bounces off him, and he has no choice but to fall on it just outside his 25-yard line. The quarterback comparison. Take a look at that. Trevor Lovick well off of his mark. Only 6 of 16, 46 yards, but the big number down there. Zero touchdowns, three interceptions. Bo Howes, not big, impressive numbers, but getting the job done, and he threw the big touchdown pass to Andrew Rush. And here's the telling story, Jamie, for the receivers for the Gators. Look at that. That's incredible when you think about 81 catches between the two of them coming into this game, and they only have two in the first half. First and 10, Lovick is passing, finds McGilvery at the side. Up over the 35, he's got more. Nigel McGilvery. That'll definitely change the story for the Bishops' receivers up over. The Gators, 45-yard line, well, actually the 50-yard line. Sorry, the key is you want to get the ball in this guy's hand. That's McGilvery's hands as much as possible. You can see how dangerous a runner he is. They get him into so outside wide where the field is in actually pretty good shape. Now he can turn on the Jets. This is what they want to do. Queens is going to give them that stuff. Take it, take it, take it. The Gators send four to the left, and that's where Lovig is looking. And he finds a man over the middle. Another first down for Bishops. And... They did not do any of this. I don't think they strung two plays together. That was Shane Thompson on the reception in all the first half. And you know, Rod, it sounds like such a simple concept. You know, they say, oh, take what the defense gives you. Trevor Lovick just was not having any of it in the first half. Right now, he's come out, he's saying, you want to give me that short stuff? I'll dump the ball off to my running back, Shane Thompson. I'll let him turn it upfield and get another 10 yards. This is more the Trevor Lovick and Bishop's offense that we become familiar with. Once again, they go strong on the right side this time. Throw it out to the side to Thompson, and more yardage. About six more for the Gators. They are on the move, well into Queens territory at the 37-yard line. And that's a good scheme. They put four receivers to one side. They only have three guys out there playing zone, so they give it back to the wide receiver. He catches it. Now they just go out and they block the defenders, and he just picks his way. They stack the side once again. A halftime adjustment. We have four out to the left. And once again, the same play to McGilvery this time on the other side. And this time it does not get much. In fact, it will be short of the first down just inside the Queen's 35-yard line. Once again,
again, just a short hitch, goes down about two or three yards. Come on, guys, come on! Nice block by Shane Thompson, but McGilvery can't get the first down, but here they go for it. Third down and short, third down and three. Interesting decision, down by only 10, but they will go for it, and they will hand off a big surprise, but Queens didn't seem to be surprised. The Gales will take over on downs. And I guess the feeling was it was far enough that a field goal would have been very difficult. Well, you hate to second guess the coach, but the point is, you get down this far by throwing the football. That's what you're known for, throwing the football. That's what you feel comfortable with doing, throwing the football. Yet you try and run it, and they've been unable to run all day against that Queen's defense. Just a great job by the Queen's defensive line. But Shutting Bishops, off the blockers. Bishops did enough to be encouraged, I would think, the way they move that football. They get a better idea about what will work. Queens goes to work from its own 35. Short pass out for Rob Weir, and he's got more over the 45, and a first down for the Gales. You know, and, and for much of we've talked about Troy Russell, he's an excellent corner, but this is not very good corner play. Rob Weir makes a nice job of coming back to the ball, but watch Troy Russell tries to knock the ball over the shoulder. See that? you got to wrap up. You know, he wraps him up. It's second down and five. Now it's a first down. At the Queens, 46. The Gales trying to answer back after an impressive quick drive by Bishops. And they'll go back to the ground game, and Paul Coriel, two, maybe three yards on the play, second and long for Queens. Francis Balafaw, the linebacker, he reads so well. Talked about he's not that big, but boy, can he read, and, and when he sees it, he just gets right back there in the backfield, makes the tackle. Leading tackler on this team with 86, the next closest guy had 56. So he had 30 more tackles than anybody else. Third Three year, sacks. not tall, but certainly big enough. As Jamie alluded to, almost like a fire plug in there, hard to move. Good speed, good tackler. And the ball was never snapped as the whistle blows. You saw the lineman move for Queens, and uh, Howes was standing still. And you know that has to be, you played center, Rod. You know the center forgot the snap count on this one because everybody moved except Remember the center. Remember procedure? The goal line, the whole line, down repeated. When it's the whole line, you know it's the center. When the ball hasn't moved and the quarterback's still sitting there waiting for the ball to come up. All right, all right, I heard you. <laughs> yeah, quarterbacks never make mistakes, do they? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. You know what, you're learning, Rod. Quarterbacks never make mistakes. Finally, after all those years. In your dreams, buddy. <laughs> Shotgun for Bo Howes. And we'll throw off the wrong foot. The more difficult foot is a lefty. And he had Rob Weir, but the ball is dropped, which uh, still would have been too short. It would have been about five yards short, so Queens will be plenty. Nice job by Bo Howes. Catchable ball, and you see Rob Weir normally would have that. Tries to catch in his hands. I think he was aware that he was short of the first down and did not want to go down on both knees to make the catch, knowing that they would have to be kicking the ball anyway. Coderre back to punt. Nigel McGilvery, the speedster from Bishops, back at his own 36-yard line. He drops the snap, and he won't get it away. Yes, he will. A good job by Coderre, and hits it right where McGilvery was standing. McGilvery gets up over the 40-yard line. Boy, that could have been a lot worse for Queens than it turned out to be. Fine play by Coderre. Well, Queens were lucky that Bishops did not have a block on it. Bishops will try again when we come back. Face it, shaving is a pain. It strips away the skin's moisture, leaving it hot, dry, and burning. But now there's proof you can take the heat out of shaving with Sensitive from Old Spice. It's the one with cooling sensates, an invigorating blast of real refreshment that cools skin scorched by shaving. Prove it to yourself. Try Sensitive from Old Spice. It's more than a great scent. This is a cooling blast of real refreshment that takes the heat out of shaving. Back in Kingston, some signs of life from the Bishop's offense in the previous drive. Four straight completions. And here is a look at Dan Coderre in big trouble after dropping the ball, but a fine effort to get it away. Yeah, it was a fine effort. He got lucky that Bishops did not have the block on. 
They were trying to set up the return for Nigel McGilvery. Coderre, though, kept his head, kept his cool, and decided he did have time to kick it and got it away. Product from right here in Kingston. And also plays defensive back for the Gales. Looking for a little more from Trevor Lovick. That different formation, they put four to the left again. This is the new look for Bishops in the second half, and they throw back to the weak side, and it is complete up near midfield. That's a nice job by David Butler to come back for that football. You know, again, Queens, every now and then they pick their moments. They, they will come with a blitz, and they'll still play zone defense. You see the corner looking inside. Butler goes down, comes back up. Nice effort to make a catch in front of Paul Greenhow. First down, 10 to go for Bishops. Just shy of midfield. Lovick throwing on every down. And another completion, this time to Stefan Roy, inside the Queens 45. What adjustment do you think the Gators made at the half? Well, I think what they decided to do is the underneath things are there. Take them. And they're saying, Trevor, we can get back there. We can flood it out. They have a back that was wide open here. Now he takes his time, he waits, he waits, and now he just waits for the receiver to get into that hole. Stephon Roy. And a nice spiral to Roy to set up another first down in Queens territory now for Trevor Lovick. Four men right, and more pressure on Lovick. He is going nowhere. In the sack, back at the Queens 50-yard line. The Erasmussen today is just having a field day, he and Jim Aru getting up the field, causing all sorts of trouble. His big tackles are having a real difficult time. You can see he's against Dave Eilers. One of the all-stars in the Ontario Quebec Conference this year, one of four on defense for Queens. And you know, if you're a running team and if Bishops were a running team, that's a real disadvantage having a guy that size in your defensive line because the bigger guy is usually going to win. But what he's using now, since Bishops is a passing team, those tackles have to be mighty quick to be able to deal with a guy that has the kind of speed that Carl Rasmussen had. I mean, you go back to that 92 Vanier Cup, they had Mark Johnson and Jamie Lewin as their two defensive ends. You looked at them and you'd laugh, saying, those guys? But boy, they had a lot of sacks that year and they pressured the quarterback all the time. And if you're a big offensive tackle, the last thing you want to see if you're throwing the ball a smaller guy, quicker guy against you. And that was a St. Mary's offense in the Vanier Cup that had a lot of big guys up front. Very talented, too. Trevor Lovick throwing again, completing again. Not for a first down. About the 38-yard uh, line of Queens. Well, it'll be interesting now, because last time they went for it in third and three, and they're going to be about third and four. This time they decide to punt it. And, you know, this is a good decision, I think, by Bishops right now because they have the wind at their backs. What little wind there is right now seems to have died off. But if they can keep Queens deep, hold them, they can get the ball back, they can win the battle of field position and get closer in the score. Because you're starting to drive the ball now about 30, 35 yards each drive. Well, Chris Edwards stands just inside Queens territory, gets a nice punt away. And that'll go right into the Queens end zone. And it's Rob Weir returning it out to about his four-yard line. Boy, Edwards hasn't had a great day of punting, but that is certainly a big one. And now let's get another CIEU update with Darren Detition. Hey, thanks very much, Rod. Ryan Wilkerson is having an outstanding day for the Waterloo Warriors. He's already thrown a couple of touchdown passes this time. And the quarterback keeper breaks it to the left side and is gone. 88 yards for the touchdown. The Warriors ranked 10th, giving it to Western, ranked third, 21 to three in the third quarter of play. And here it is 10 to nothing for Queens. The surprise continues in London, although we all knew the Waterloo Warriors were an excellent team. Handoff inside for Queens. Up over the 26 yard line for Paul Coriel. This is a real test for Queens' offense right now because they're in the shadow of their own goal line. They have to get something established because Bishops are starting to get their offense on track. They have to keep the ball out of Trevor Lovick's hands. They want to try and eat up time on the clock because they have the wind in their face with seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. About seven yards on that rush, second and three for Bo Howes and the Queens Golden Gales. They'll run it again, Coriel again. And not a first down, picks up maybe two yards. He will be just shy of the 30-yard line. He had to get to the 30 for that first. 
It's a good job by Bishops of trying to run toss where they reach with all the offensive linemen, leave with the fullback. And Coriel's trying to get that outside, but Bishop's defenders did a really good job of getting upfield leverage. Of course, Coriel to turn it back inside. And he's short of the first down. Nigel McGilvery back again for Dan Coderre. Last time Coderre barely got it off when he dropped the snap. Handles it cleanly this time and gets a good punt away himself. The punting has improved as the afternoon has gone on. McGilvery chased back. They do the reverse. Luke Norman takes it from McGilvery. He's got lots of room on the right side. Up past midfield. The 45 and down across the 40-yard line of Queens. They pull out the bag of tricks. Good news for Bishop. We're staying. We're staying, Rick. We're staying. It's a nice job by McGilvery. Fields it on the fly. Now Normand. You can see, defenders going down, realize that Norman's coming around, but now they get the wall set up. Norman gets outside, and there's lots of room. It's a nice job of running with the ball, getting it up into great field position for Bishops. Once again, a significant play on special teams. How significant? We'll find out in this drive. The way the Gators have been moving the football, this could be very significant. First and 10, Lovick finds a man down near the 25-yard line. Stefan Waugh steps out of bounds at the 26. Unusual for Bishops in this formation. They came out very balanced against Stefan Waugh. They go inside. Now watch, he turns out. The ball's thrown perfectly. Beautiful throw. Lovig looks more composed this half as well, gaining confidence with each pass, and this one is complete as well. Down at the 17-yard line of the Golden Gales for number three, Dave Butler. And look at the stats in the second half, not one incomplete pass. What a tale being told by Lovig as the drive continues. And this time they hand off. And he's got some room down to the 12-yard line. And of course, Jamie, that was Shane Thompson. You start throwing the ball, then they have to respect the run. You get a little bit of room up the middle. Absolutely. Now they've really got Queens kind of back on their heels right now. And they run the trap play. You can see the guard pulls across. Boom. Boy, what a hit. Enough for the first down. The deepest drive for the Bishop Skaters inside the 15-yard line. Love it. Looks to pass. And it is intercepted. Max Turner, the veteran, who was in the 1992 Vanier Cup with Queens, the biggest play of the ball game so far. A 37-yard return for Max Turner, snuffing out Bishop's finest drive and its best chance at getting points. And he steps right in front of Nigel McGilvery, who's down on his knees. And you know what? If Nigel McGilvery gets blocked, he's going to score. No one's going to outrun Nigel McGilvery. It's first incompletion of the half, and it's a big one. So Queens will start on its own 46, a major turnaround when Bishop's was getting right back in this ball game. The pass goes short intended for Andrew Rush, and it falls incomplete. Steps in front, Nigel McGilvery down on his knees. Max Turner's looking at the QB and sees he's throwing to him all the way. And he steps up. Trevor Lovick does a pretty good job of turning him back inside. And then Nigel McGilvery comes up and makes the tackle. Nonetheless, a chance for Bishops to score and get the momentum back in this football game. And it's snuffed out just like that by Max Turner. Max Turner, one of the best athletes in this team. He has a 38-inch vertical jump, which is really exceptional. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. The Golden Gales operating against the wind. A breeze not nearly as stiff as it was at the beginning of the game, nonetheless in their faces for Bowhouse. Gales look to be abandoning the running game a bit in the first half. And they will pass again now. And it will be complete. Up over the middle and over midfield for Paul Othan. And a first down, Queens. 
And the Othan name familiar to Queens fans, his brother, Steve Othan, played quarterback here, was part of that 92 Vanier Cup team, backed up Tim Pendergast. Bo Howes, nice job. You know, he looks off, and then he comes back into Steve Othan. And Othan, as well, knows where he is. He realizes, I'm not sure if I've got the first down now. I better catch that ball, bang, get my shoulders up the field, and make sure I get it. The sticks move. It's first and 10. Queens inside Bishop's territory at the 52-yard line. Howes. Play action fake to Coriel. He'll throw. And a flag on the play. The pass complete. Up near the 45 to number 22, Steve Gibbons. In for the injured Don John Thielen. And it's against Queens. Number one. Number one gold offside, down repeated. Now that's Andrew Rush, the wide receiver, and coaches would tell you he must have lined up offside. That's the only thing I can think of. Because he's not supposed to go on the quarterback's cadence. He looks inside and he goes on ball movement. They should never be offside. You should always ask the official, am I okay? There he is there. You see that, am I okay? So they'll do it first and 15 for the Gales. Once again, play action fake. And Howes looks, and he is almost picked up. Boy, Troy Russell knows he should have had this one, and this is just not a very not a very good pass thrown by Bo Howes. A lot of traffic in there. It's tough because he never really gets turned up the field. And, you know, and it's so tough for I wonder if Russell was thinking of his return at that point. He did have some daylight ahead of him and a couple of blockers. And he's fast. It almost looked like he wanted to take off before that ball was in the midst. Second and 15. Gales just inside their own territory. The screen out to John Taylor, who doesn't get the first down, but gets it inside Bishop's territory down to the 47. Good job, fellas. The Gales will be punting as you look at Ian Brown. The, the, the CIU Coach of the Year, the Frank Tyndall Trophy winner in 1992. The year Bishops lost to Queens in the OQ final. Bishops was the favorite. The Gales went on to win the national championship. And another heartbreak for an excellent Bishops program that has been the most consistent in the Ontario Quebec Conference for years. Coderre to punt to McGilvery again. This one much shorter, but he gets the roll. McGilvery slow to pick it up and then heads the wrong way hoping to get outside with his speed he does but doesn't get much more than from where he began well stay tuned following today's game for the TSN turning point brought to you by Sony the new Sony Handycam vision clearly the latest in video cameras The new Sony Handycam Vision, clearly the latest in video cameras, with a built-in LCD screen for picture-perfect playback. There's a built-in speaker, too, so you can capture every precious moment, every precious memory. The new Handycam Vision, it's more than a camcorder, it's a Sony. No contest in the other Ontario Quebec semi final. The Ottawa UGGs leading Concordia 28 to 7. It looks like the magic for the Stingers over the GGs has run out. And I bet your quarterback, Steve Clark, for the GGs is probably having a pretty good day. And they will host the OQ final, assuming they go on to win. We don't know who it'll be, either Bishops or Queens. Right now, Queens has the lead 10 3, but Bishops showing signs of some real offense. Lovick looking deep and. Looks like he has McGilvery just over coverage there, but it heads out of bounds. Actually, Paul Greenhow is there gambling a little bit, trying to come up and misjudge the ball. Look at that. I mean, you don't want to do that. And if the sideline had not been there, we might have a touchdown Bishops. Well, interesting what's going to happen to Bishops now is that not only are they going to have what wind there is left in their face in the fourth quarter, 
but the sun is going to be in the receiver's eyes all the time because the sun is starting to set now, get low in the sky, and the shadows are getting pretty long. They'll be looking directly into the sun. Time winding down in the third quarter, less than two minutes to play. Lovick trying to get something going again, under pressure, and he is brought down again. A frustrating turn of events for Trevor Lovick, who last drive looked to be taking the Gators in for the first touchdown. Now he is sacked deep in his own territory. Again, it's a veteran Max Turner coming on that halfback blitz. They've run it a couple of times today, three times in particular. And it just forces Trevor Lovick to stop, try and compose himself. And James Osborne and Kevin Buskey and the rest of the crew commit to make the tackle. Carl Rasmussen, number 42, once again for Queens, having a great day as is the Gales defense with Bishops punting from its end zone. They'll enjoy great field position. Greenhow takes it across the Bishops 25 yard line. All Queens now deep in Bishops territory with a 10 nothing lead near the end of the third quarter in Kingston. Out on the ice, I don't score points for how my hair looks. But after the game, in front of the press, when the cameras are just inches away and millions of fans are watching, my hair has to look great. And great hair can't have flakes. No way. So I get rid of them with Head & Shoulders. It keeps my dandruff in check and my hair looking great. Hey, you can't hide under a helmet all the time. Head & Shoulders, every day. Just great hair can't have flakes. It's been a difficult day for the punters here in Kingston, especially Chris Edwards at Bishops. And you know, interesting what Queens did here. They, instead of coming with folks and only having Rob Weir back, they decided they were going to just play a punt hold, and they had two people back. And they tried to take it on the fly, and that was a good play. Now, interesting enough, we'll see Queens again back there with two return men. That's Rob Weir and Paul Greenhow. A good break for Bishops. A penalty on the play lets the Gators re-kick. This time, Edwards will stand uh, just outside his end zone. Sorry, Brad. A smart play, though, by Queens to make sure that they catch the ball in flight. Because you know what? It adds another 10 to 15 yards if you let it bounce. Edwards had some trouble earlier this year with his long snapper. A lot of them were going all over the place. The snap is fine, however, and have been most of the day. The punt, however, is short once again. This time taken by Rob Weir. And he is brought down at the 36-yard line. The crowd reacts a bit, thinking it was a face mask. But no flags on the play. And still, Queens will take over in some pretty good shape field-wise. 26-yard punt for Edwards. Looks like a little bit of a face mask there. Actually, underneath the helmet. But I don't think you're allowed to do that either. Number 32, Matt Roberts on that tackle of Weir. The one in question quickly held the hands up to say, not me. Howes back to throw. Looks over the middle, and he's got another completion. Matt Carlisle down near the Bishops' 30-yard line. Well, now Bishops are getting themselves into a bit of a situation where they feel they have to start to gamble a little bit. They're going to start to come with their linebackers. You can see Bellefoy. He's just going man-to-man -man on Steve Givens. Linebackers aren't dropping back into those zone areas now, and Bo Howes realizes that he can get his tight end in there and just throws the ball inside. Tackle by Aaron White on the play. Another first down, though, for Queens. The Gales pressing again. Deep inside Bishop's territory with a 10-0 lead at the end of the third quarter. Another hitch pass, and it's dropped. Intended for number 15, John Taylor. Barring a penalty, this should be the last play of the third quarter. As Bo Howes steps over center. Second and 10 from the Bishop's 30-yard line. Passing again. And another completion for Queens to Andrew Rush, who has scored the only touchdown in this game so far. And another first down for the Golden Gales. As we are through three quarters of play, Queens trying to add to its lead and seal a victory here in the OQ playoffs.
This sports break is brought to you by Canadian Tire. There's a lot more to Canadian Tire for a lot less. Big day in the Canadian Football League. In the South Division, a semifinal is taking place. The Baltimore Stallions are home to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Bombers got in when they beat Ottawa last week, but they're getting beat up this afternoon. Tracy Ham leading the Stallions into the playoffs on a 10-game winning streak. Ham, he'll get the offense going early on. To Chris Armstrong, he's wide open. Finally tackled inside the five. Ham then calls his own number from there. He'll take it in from four yards out. The Stallions jump out in front and the Bombers seven to one, leading 12 to one. Mike Pringle, he'll take the pitch. He'll go five yards. That's his 14th rushing touchdown of the year. The Stallions were leading Winnipeg 18 to one when they strike again. Pringle, a one yard touchdown run, his second of the game. They're making it look easy this afternoon, 25 to 1. A little later on, the Calgary Stampeders will play host to the Hamilton Tie Cats. That'll do it for now. Hey, this feels nice. Who's pulling on my shirt? It's me, Johnson, fool. Is this Russell Athletic? Sure, feel like cover stitching. Must be that new blend fabric. Yeah, it's tough, strong. And no little fuzzballs. Oh, really? oh, by the way, anybody got the ball? I think I got it. That's not the ball. Oh, sorry. Looking for really tough athletic wear? Get Russell Athletic and get tough. The Queen's Golden Gales lead Bishops by 10. Jamie, I would think... Bishops has got to stop this. They have here. to. This is the critical point in the football game for them right now. If they go down 17 to nothing, it's going to be awful tough for them to come back. 17 nothing in a game where points have been very hard to come by. Hand off right side, Coriel on the ground, and flags are down. It could be holding against the Gales. Man down for the Bishops Gators. Number 49, Chris Horner. The only touchdown of this game was scored at a similar point in the field for Queens. A pass from Bo Howes, 22 yards to Andrew Rush. Now it's a nice play because they got set in the shotgun. Take a look. 49, and I believe that's where the penalty took place. Oh, maybe not. I think it might be back there a little bit hard, but he's hurt. He got twisted. The knee twisted as Ouch. he goes down, and he is still down. Chris Horner from Mississauga, Ontario, on a defense that has a big task ahead of it. They certainly need him in there at this point. It's good to see him get up and walk off under his own steam. Without any assistance. We talked earlier about the Bishop's Gators and really uh, hard luck in many ways. They have been close, really, I would say, the best team that has not won a national championship. No question about that, Rod. I mean, that's just incredible, the kind of record that they have had throughout the 80s and the kind of, kind of quarterbacks they've had there. Tony Harris, Silvio Martel, Jim Murphy, all of them were all Canadians. Yet to come up empty in a national championship. Well, there's Bo Howes and the Queen's Golden Gales. Lots of room over the middle. And a touchdown. Paul Coriel. <laughs> 23 yards. And the Gales have taken command of this ball game. Talk about that eye draw, and there it is once again. Bang, straight up. It's just man. Nice job by the offensive guard to get on Aaron White, the safety. And now he just turns on the Jets. Wow. That was the perfect call against that defense. They were expecting pass all the way. 17-0. Queens in control in the fourth quarter. Leading the Bishop Skaters.
What's so new about New Speed Stick Clear Deodorant? Take a look at this gel. See? It's wet and sticky. For mine, it goes on dry. New Speed Stick Clear. It's more than clear. It's clearly dry. By Menon. Hey, I'll take dry any day. Queens has scored with the pass and scored with the run. That's uh, really a testimony to the way their offense has run this year. Again, they were running play action pass out of that formation all day. And you can see how Bishop's really worked up hard off the field. Then they hand it off to Coriel. Look at the size of his thighs and his legs. Really built powerfully in his lower body. Just a nice job of getting up there. Is he ever happy? Attended Michael Power High School in Toronto, coached by Sean Allen and also Tony Winucci. What it be, baby? Pretty good day. Queens football. Lots left, baby. Lots left. <laughs> Lots left, perhaps, for Queens. Lots left for uh, Bishops, perhaps, if Lovett can get them going. They try the short kick. 